We're delving into the UAE's latest food trends and getting serenaded in studio. This is DXV Today. And welcome to yet another episode of DXB Today. And it's a trending Tuesday. And we are diving headfirst into Dubai's buzzing food scene as the world's biggest F&B events happen right here this week. Absolutely. Gulf food kicked off yesterday at the Dubai World Trade Center, bringing with it some of the biggest names when it comes to food and beverages in the community. That's right. And some of the world's greatest chefs are also in town, bringing exciting new food ventures to Dubai. Guys, what has stood out for you this week? It's all about Gulf food. It's all 30 about... times larger this year, by the way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Is that a good thing or a bad thing, Tom? I think we've, worked, this year. Uh, we've worked that one out by the, by the traffic <laughs> at the moment. Um, can you find a restaurant table, seat at a restaurant? Can you find a hotel room? Oh. Not, not the moment. I'm intrigued by all the vegan options, though. I've heard they have now have vegan crab there and vegan salmon. Salmon made from peas. Would you guys try that? I mean, I'll, I'll try anything, really. Okay. If it's food, I will eat it. But... You know, all great stuff. It's all innovation. Innovation in food. I think that's the way forward as well, isn't it? And obviously, one of the trends that we'll talk about tonight is all things homegrown. So looking forward to that. Uh, right, we're not going to do it alone. Uh, our guest co-host lives and breathes, maybe even bleeds a bit of food every now and again. <laughs> uh, and then she writes about it straight after that. She's here to guide us through today's culinary journey of delight. Who is today's co-host? Hi, I'm Courtney Brandt, a food writer, content creator, and delighted to be joining DXB today as a co-host to talk about all things food. Yeah, we're talking to Courtney uh, about emerging food trends uh, in Dubai uh, and with Gulf Food running uh, all the way through till the end of the week. There's lots for us to discuss. That's right, Tom, you said it. Because there's over 5,000 F&B uh, companies from 125 different countries present at Gulf Food 2023. And Khalid Saeed was on the ground earlier and he managed to try out some of that food. Take a look. at the largest food show in the world, Gulf Food, where over 5,000 companies have come together to showcase what they're doing with food. And I'm gonna look at a unique section where the metaverse meets food, and I'm talking about the foodverse. For us, foodverse is future of food in the metaverse or taking things into Web3. Now, there are three basic problems that we're solving. One is to produce how to sustain chefs for the industry by bringing training into the metaverse. Second thing, helping create validation and integrity to learning, okay, by using the blockchain technology. And most importantly, for the chefs in the industry, helping establish a creator economy on the metaverse. It starts with uh, education, for example, using the metaverse to train the chefs all over the world. It goes all the way to food security and traceability of foods. And then, of course, uh, to the payment mechanisms and payment methods, all the way to the small farmers. How is NFTs taking over the food industry? Well, basically, they are transforming everything that has to do with loyalty and membership and access to all sorts of benefits in the real world. So if you heard about NFTs in the past, you probably remember some very expensive artworks, but this kind of NFTs can be used in the real world. For example, here at the Foodverse, uh, there's going to be a world premiere of the first Michelin star restaurants launching the first NFT dinner. It's, it's just going to be like five of those, and you can buy them and get a dinner for two at uh, one of the Michelin star restaurants. Today I got to see where technology and food come together and they bring it to the table. From one foodie to another Gulf food is not to be missed. Now, Courtney, hit us up. What are some of the trends to uncover this year? We've got a lot. We've got plant-based, we've got transparency, we've got technology. There is, I'm really optimistic for 2023. 
Cool. Yes. And that's sustainable farming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, it looks like Girl Food is, without doubt, the place to be if you want to discover the future of food. Well, our next guest is at the convention showing us how she's taking food into the metaverse. It is a warm welcome to the co-founder of One Rare, Sapreet Raju. Sapreet, thanks for being with us. Thank Very you so much for having us. me. Uh, I mentioned there taking food into the metaverse. Maybe I should be talking about creating the first metaverse for food. Which way around do you look at it? Anne? I think the pandemic kind of forced the food industry to look at monetization options, marketing options in a whole new way. And that has led to the rise of the food world. So it's actually not been any of us building the technology, but the need of the hour, because people realize that uh, you know, just kind of sourcing local options to earn money, a restaurant, a chef being forced to shut down because the area is in a lockdown, uh, allow, you know, kind of created that chance for them to actually explore their digital loyalty clubs, to explore the audience beyond uh, where they are and grow that. And that kind of led to the rise of the food worse because mm. people can now, uh, you know, support chefs, restaurants, loyalty clubs anywhere in the world. Yeah. And from what I understand, you are the first in the world. This is a Dubai original and nobody else in the entire world. This is this is you. Yes, we were very lucky to start in January 2021. So it's been two years for us now and we've been building step by step. And actually, the more feedback you get from the chefs and restaurants allows you to build better. So it's been doing that for us for the last two years. I have quite a simple question when I hear about taking food into the metaverse. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's a very good question. I feel like I'm the only one who's confused here. So are you, you're not eating in the metaverse, are you? So I think the best part about food is tasting it. And yeah. anybody who says that you're replacing the real world, it's not the right idea. Mm. The idea is that today all the digital interaction we have, you know, when we look at a chef's social media, when we're looking at a recipe on YouTube, for example, the idea is to make that experience better. So you're engaging in a more meaningful way with the audience. And then, of course, you take that NFT to the real world and you swap it for a meal. So all the time you spend in the metaverse can actually get you your favorite sandwich or your favorite sushi. And are there simulations as well and how you can cook your own food? Yes, absolutely. So it's just a more immersive way for people to actually interact with food and then, of course, taste it in real life. I'm not a fan of tasting in the food wars. <laughs> so, Sabri, there are celebrity chefs in this metaverse, foodverse, and you can visit some of your favorite restaurants. It's, it's, it's overwhelming, I think. Now, I, I'm just curious. At what point are we going to be able to go into the food verse, order a meal and have it delivered to our home? I think with each step, I think Dubai is actually a great place to actually see that model being implemented. We are in the process of doing that. Our first set of partner restaurants, including Papa John's and Farzi Cafe, are about to start this process. So I think it'll be sooner than you expect. Now, you've mentioned also that you're using blockchain technology in this space. You've also mentioned food NFT. So... Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. So I think blockchain is this new powerful technology that allows more people to be a part of a project. They're not a follower, they're a part of the community and that allows for ownership. So let's say you buy a membership NFT for a club and after a while you're not sure that you want to be a part of it. You have the power to sell it to another user and I think that makes it very powerful because you would feel like we would all collectively own one rare or the food words. It's mm. ours, it's not belonging to one person. It's fascinating, isn't it? Because, you know, you think about a marketplace and you think of a food market being as one of the or yep. original businesses. Mm -hmm. And this is just a continuation of it, isn't it? I'm, I'm just, anything that can help me cook a little bit. I'm really interested <laughs> in this. I want to support my favorite restaurants, but I'm also like for the individual, for the yeah. consumer to see something and to have that little bit of ownership. I really love it. Yeah, I think people really are looking forward to just being, showing that love for food. And that's why it was a theme for us, to be honest. It was the other way we are blockchain specialists. And for us, food was the first thing people can relate to. You know, like for everybody knows and what it, it tastes like. We've just seen it a, a little earlier. It looks fun as well. Yeah. And you, you need that fun, don't yeah. you? you need and that. for blockchain especially, because honestly, blockchain is technically designed to make you feel stupid. The way people, <laughs> <laughs> you know, talk about it. I have felt <laughs> stupid for a long time with the blockchain. So for me, Food is the first thing that if somebody tells me what goes into this lasagna, my brain, my the cooking part of my brain would have an idea. The foodie inside me yeah. would know better. Yeah. So that was the reason we chose food as our theme to begin with, because it was just something easier to understand. Zubri, Raju, thank you so much for being on DXB today. Can't wait to talk to you again when we can actually eat in the metaverse, because then the calories don't count. Ah, that joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what can I say? We're going to be taking a short break right now, but when we're back, learn how ugly vegetables are finally getting their time in the spotlight. Stay tuned. Welcome back. 
where we are quite literally decoding the future of food and how Dubai is making a more sustainable future for us all. One big hurdle, of course, is food waste, and that's obviously being addressed, Courtney, down uh, at uh, Gulf Food this week, but also the importance of food and beverage, hospitality, and the, portent, the place it, par it plays in, in our co in communities at the moment. Absolutely. I think we can be so proud of the Dubai F&B scene. We saw earlier uh, this week there was a huge, three restaurants came together, uh, the Rikas group, uh, to do uh, some fundraising for Syria and Turkey. Uh, that's going to extend. Uh, that's, not, that's one of many uh, there's going to be one, I think um, Hatsa Matsar is also going to be doing okay. one coming up the 27th. Uh, so just check your calendars, check your social media. Yeah. And in terms of what you've seen down at Gulf Food, yeah, <laughs> we know it's huge this year as well. But are we seeing the innovation as well that's come in place? We are. I'm fascinated always by, you know, I, through kind of necessity, there's challenges. You know, we've come out of a, a dark time for yeah. F&B and, and the, the rising above the, you know, getting rid of waste, the being more sustainable. These are going comprehensively and holistically into all the business plans. So it's really not one thing. It's like everything I'm equally ex excited about. <laughs> oh, fascinating stuff and very hopeful, of course. Well, when there's a will, there's a way. One Dubai grocery delivery startup is eliminating food waste by giving unwanted veggies a second chance. Lane learned why you should never judge a vegetable by its looks. <laughs> and it's that time to catch up with one of the founders of Here I Go, Daniel. How are you, bruvs? I'm well, thank you. So uh, this is an absolute amazing concept. Like, I, it's my kind of thing. How did you come up with this concept? I think my inspiration started from, you know, traveling around the world and seeing a lot of inequality, particularly when I traveled to Nigeria, where it's home for me, where, where, you know, a lot of people would stop me on the street and ask me money for food. But we're all in a beautiful country uh, when we come back to Dubai, where we have brunches, we have a lot of surplus food. And, you know, my inspiration was like, what do we do with this surplus food? Uh, and it came to knowledge to me that you know a lot of time those food gets wasted as i did more research i realized that food waste is not just an inequality issue it's also environmental uh, we keep talking about making the world sustainable we all need to drive evs but when you think about it from a you know another side of things not everybody drive cars but if food waste when you equate it with road transportation emission that's about 87 percent and i thought well Food waste should be the first priority that we need to solve for. And that's why I decided to solve it uh, using technology. So I'm here now with Donna, who is another part of this fabulous team. And Donna, this is absolutely incredible. I want to get more into what and how it works in terms of the boxes, the logistics, where they go. Tell me more about the fruit and veg. Is the ugly fruit? I don't think it's ugly. Well, that's what we're trying to change. Mm. The whole industry has been termed ugly, but it's not all ugly, right? And we shouldn't call it ugly, it's just different. Yeah. So we may get produce that looks a bit different to the normal, <laughs> right? That's not what you'd find in a supermarket. That looks like a maraca, maracas, doesn't it? Could be dry it, <laughs> that could be a new use for the vegetable, but it's perfectly edible, right? So we're trying to change that, that not everything is ugly. Well, the biggest problem here actually for us is also surplus. And some of that will come from our importers, some of that will come from our local farms. So if there's too much produce, that's also at risk of going to waste. So tell me more about if I'm a customer, how do I um, actually order one of the boxes? So you can go to our website, herogo.ae, choose the size of the box. This is a large box, medium or small. It's a surprise what's inside at the moment because it's based on seasonality and also what is at risk of going to waste. You choose that to come every week or every fortnight and it arrives at your door from 60 dirhams a box. Wow. You're a hero. Yeah. Thank you so much. So you. <laughs> uh, Lane, thank you very much indeed for that. <laughs> we'll certainly think twice before picking produce down at the supermarket next time. Now, uh, here you go, proving it's not what a vegetable looks like, it's what's on the inside that really counts. Yes, and don't you forget it. Our next guest knows better than anyone about this. She's been working hard to grow the world's most famous fungus, the mushroom, in the heat of the Dubai desert. So please welcome Bronte Weir, the co-founder of Below Farms. Thank you so much for joining us, Bronte. Thank you for having me. So I think we need to address the box in the room. It's right here, Below Farm. Can you tell us a little bit about what we're looking at? 
Yeah, so this is our home mushroom grow kit. It grows these amazing pink oyster mushrooms really well in your living room. It takes about a week. But more interestingly, we make them right here in the UAE. We actually use date palm to grow our mushrooms on. Why would you use date palm though? Well, mushrooms are actually a fantastic tool in the circular economy. Mm. They break down organic matter and recycle it uh, to uh, bring the nutrients back into the food chain. And date palm is a massive issue in terms of waste here. There's a term called palm graveyards, and you know they don't decompose when you put them in the desert, it's too dry. So, so we're taking the date palm out and we're using it to create food. And how much could this feed you, basically? So this uh, grow kit will produce about 1 to 1.5 kilos of mushrooms. You get a couple of different harvests that come um, over about a week. So the first harvest takes about a week to get to, and then you can have extra ones afterwards. Do you know what I think I like the most about this is that this, I don't have children, but even as an adult, I was fascinated that to me, you, to, to bring children in so early to kind of understand the process. And I know you have a child. Was there any, in, in having this grow at home kit, was, was there talk about how to bring this to the consumer in a way that they would really latch on to? Well, equally, to get kids to eat mushrooms yeah. as well. <laughs> I know, well, you, make, you make them pink, right? My mother-in-law calls them my Barbie mushrooms. So. <laughs> But yeah, so, you know, so obviously we're not just selling the grow kits. We also grow mushrooms, fresh, the fresh produce, um, which we sell in retailers and to the different restaurants across the across the region. They're really delicious. We have oyster, king oyster, shiitake, and lion's mane. Um, they have that meaty texture and umami taste, which means they're a great alternative to meat. I know you guys have been talking. Oh about no, the burgers! This is the mm. first time I, I like. I've never enjoyed a burger so much. It was a shiitake? What was that with that? The mushroom. Yeah, yeah the, the shiitake <laughs> mushroom burger. I'm like clearly. I know a lot about mushrooms over here. Uh, but yeah, it was absolutely delicious, a, a great alternative. But obviously, I think the first question you get is why mushrooms? Um, what made you think of mushrooms as an unusual venture here in the UAE? Actually, what sort of really started it off was how beautiful they are. It was an arrangement of oyster mushrooms, which is somewhere where you would expect to see a flower arrangement. Mm. And it kind of planted a seed, and after a lot of research and you know spreadsheets and excels to figure out actually how can we make it work in the desert um cut to a few three four years later we have a mushroom farm in the desert uh growing mushrooms so question to that uh obviously you mentioned there about the importance of food security and the importance of mushrooms to the few, the circularity of food as well with the sort of data that you're getting from the mushroom growing could you apply that to other vegetables to other fungi is that something you could do in the future Actually, for us, like, we were actually interested in going deeper into mushrooms. Oh. If you think about it, there's the plant kingdom, that's vegetables, there's the animal kingdom, there's meat, and the fungi kingdom is its whole own kingdom, right? And mushrooms is one piece, but actually, mushrooms is just a fruit. Yeah. Below the mushroom is a vast root network known as the mycelium. And it is mycelium that has incredible properties that we're only just really learning about. People are using it to make alternatives to styrofoam, to make potential chipboard, etc. So there are some really interesting use cases there that we're interested to explore. Now I'm sure this has been considered already, but this mushroom is not endemic to the UAE, is it? Is there any chance that it could cause any kind of environmental problems if they sort of spread? No, um, this is not endemic to the UAE, but we've actually chosen a variety that grows really well in the warmer climates that we have here. Um, we can grow, grow completely in controlled environment, we control the temperature, we control the humidity, the light, the air mix that they have, so really it's um, not something that we worry about. All right, amazing. <laughs> Bronte, we can't thank you enough. You have redefined a box of mushrooms uh, for me, <laughs> fundamentally there. <laughs> Loving it. Um, and all the best. Thank uh, you so much. Moving forward with this one. Big thanks to uh, Bronte and all the team for joining us from Below Farms. All right, Courtney, time to put the spotlight on okay. you. The this is the Experience 60. We're going to see how much you've been paying attention. Okay. Are you guys ready to start the countdown? Three, two, one. What is our theme for today's episode, Thriving Tuesday or Trending Tuesday? It is Trending Tuesday. Correct. The food exhibition happening in Dubai is called what? Gulf food or gulp food? Gulf food. Correct. Where is gulf food happening? El Safe Market or the Dubai World Trade Center? The Dubai World Trade Center. Correct. How many F&B companies are at the festival? A thousand or five thousand? I'm going to go five thousand. Correct. When is the last day of the festival? The 22nd of February or the 24th of February? 24th. Correct again. Who is at the gulf food festival from DXB today? Was is it Khaled or Fadis? Khaled. Correct. <laughs> what is the name of the food verse company we featured today? One rare or rare food? Rare food. 
Incorrect. One rare. <laughs> Who is the founder of One Rare? Sandeep Raju or Supreet Raju? Sandeep Raju. Um, uh, yes. Supreet. Supreet yes. Raju. Sorry. Correct. Yeah, those are very close. I'm going to give that those one to you. Okay. Is One Rare participating at Gulf Food? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, correct. What is the name of the grocery delivery startup featured today? Deliveroo or HeroGo? HeroGo. Correct. And time is up. How Thoughts. many did we get right there? We got nine okay, correct. I'll well take it. Done. Thank you. We make a good we team. Do. And how yes. you doing on that leaderboard? Let's have a look. Okay. Have I learned a lot. You, yeah, hey, you did pretty well. You did pretty well. There was a few trick questions in there yeah, for sure. Appreciate it. I thought you were paying attention. Smashing it for the week hey, so hey, far. Hey, nice I got to points at the doing, top of the leaderboard. Well. Doing pretty well. <laughs> Amazing stuff. Thank you so much for joining us. It's time for a small break. And apart from this amazing uh, performance that we saw, we've got another one in just a bit. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Welcome back to DXB Today. Now we have got the incredible Aston Wiley in studio with us. He's going to be performing in just a few minutes. But first, Aston, first of all, congratulations on your new single. Is that what you're performing for us today? Yes, Butterflies. Thank you so much for having me. It's uh -huh. good to be here. We are really excited. And I've seen you on The Voice before. That must have been an incredible experience. Similar stage to this. Not, not much <laughs> different. But yeah, yeah, been there. So what do you do in Dubai right now? Is this a full-time career for you? Yeah, my family and I have made Dubai our home. It's a lovely place. We've been here for a year and a half, and I play music full-time. So you do gigs, you're doing events, weddings. How are you busy? Ah, are you residencies, lots of residencies, but I love the weddings. I love the corporate events, so I'm here to book. I'm here to play. It's what I love to do. So where are your residencies? The people watching you today are for sure going to be your fans, because I've seen you perform. You are amazing. Oh, my uh, goodness. Where can they catch you? Oh, you can catch me all over Dubai, all over, over Dubai, all over Dubai. Please follow me on Instagram to check where. Okay, well, we have all those details on. Now, what <laughs> can there. we look forward to? you got Butterflies. How has that been going, the release of your new single? It's like a party, releasing a song. It's like a party. You know, you like you tell your friends and family, please get involved, get, in, get on board and listen. And it's been great. So it's been, uh, it's been good. I released a remix like a couple days ago. So, you know, we're ramping up the party. Oh, well, best of luck to you. I'm so excited to see you perform today. I'm going to let you get ready. Meanwhile, I'm going to throw on over to Tom, who's uh, got the details for our competition this week. You're right there, Dina. Thank you very much indeed for that. We are giving away not one but two tickets to the Mind Valley Live event. It's coming up this weekend, in fact. To win, simply head on down to the Dubai One Instagram page now. Find the competition post. Make sure you are following the instructions and let us know why you should be picking up this award. We will be announcing our winner on Friday's show. I we? think Friday's show Friday's sounds show? good. Yeah. End of the week? Right before the weekend? Just before the weekend. Why not? <laughs> That's going to be it from us today. Now, don't forget, if you are going to Gulf Food, tag your experience and hashtag <laughs> DXB today. We're going to be back tomorrow talking about some amazing, bouncy, world-breaking stunts happening right here in Dubai. Good night for now. But before you go, Aston, take it away, buddy. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. DXB today, it's been a good time. This one's called Butterflies, and I hope that you enjoy it. Is it weird that I still feel butterflies when I'm around you? Is it weird that you're living rent free inside my mind? Funny how you don't expect this promise from my perspective. You're as perfect as they come. So, would you let me hold your hand through this journey? Would you let me shoulder all your worries? Would you let me stay through the heartache? Oh, darling, there'll be mistakes. It might sound crazy, but I want to make them with you. So break the rules, play a tune, buckle up and get confused. Fold down, get back up, and chase sunsets and the blood. Hit the bar a little too hard. Get a chauffeur, pay too much. Make a bad joke and still laugh it off. Laugh it off. I'm not into keeping score as long as I'm scoring with you. Always had a hard time taking chances, but I'll take a chance on you. Funny how your presence heals me because you're not just here, you're listening. And I've never felt so free than when you're here alone with me. Would you let me hold your hand through this journey? Would you let me shoulder all your worries would you let me stay through your heartache oh darling there'll be mistakes it might sound crazy but i want to make them with you so break the rules plan you buckle up and get confused fold down get back up and chase sunsets have no luck hit the bar a little too hard get a chauffeur pay too much 
Make a bad joke and still laugh it off As long as we are together ooh, 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 ooh. Sing with me, together Is it weird that I still feel butterflies when I'm around you? Is it weird that you're living rent free inside my mind? Funny how you don't expect this promise from my perspective. You're as perfect as they come. So, would you let me hold your hand through this journey? Would you let me shoulder all your worries? Would you let me stay through the heartache? Oh, darling, there'll be mistakes. It might sound crazy, but I want to make them with you. So, 